If you drive an EV, then you'll already know that prices can vary wildly from one network to another, and the rate of charge can vary just as much. Do you ever find that you turn up to charge your vehicle, only to find that you're paying over the odds for a charger that is outpaced by your toaster? Well, that's why I've been travelling around the country, testing out different charging networks, so that I can provide you with the information you need when planning trips. And given that I drive a Tesla, some of the networks I visited this month charge more than double what I usually pay. So if you like the channel, please be sure to check out our Patreon, that's linked down below. Anyway, please stick around as I reveal what charging is really like around the UK and provide some useful tips that will save you time, money and effort. This month we're going to start with Genie Point, or regulars of the channel may have seen that Genie Point is busy promoting its new charging locations and upgrading many of its existing ones. But at 79 pence per kilowatt hour peak and 75p off peak, this really is one that you should use only if you've got money burning a hole in your pocket. And even if you do, you're best splurging on a decaf, almond milk, gold blend, frappa lappuccino, or whatever is the trendy drink these days. I really question whether a business like this has much of a future. But if you are a Genie Point fan, then please let me know what the appeal is. I genuinely would like to know. Please leave your comments below. Well, next up would have been Shell Recharge, but they remain blacklisted from my channel. Not that anyone should want to use them. Enough said. In more positive news, GridServe remains a favourite of this channel. This company is really on the up with major investment allowing them to expand rapidly. You'd think that would result in prices going up to help offset those expansion costs, but prices remain a relatively reasonable 69 pence per kilowatt hour. Not a bargain for sure, but at least you can charge up to 350 kilowatt with support for CCS2 and Chadamo. They also have a lower rate for AC charging at 49p using Type 2 connector. Well, of note is the reported low pre-authorisation charge of just £1. They do mention an exception for the rugby site, as this location charges up to £35. Now, I've seen some comments from viewers about new installations at some of their popular sites, so if you happen to snap any decent pictures or videos, please email them to us. We may be able to feature them in upcoming videos. Uh, details in the description down below. Well, this is one to watch out for. Ionity is a bit of an interesting one. They do have some excellent fast chargers with some 350 kilowatt chargers here around the corner in Lancashire. And they do have a pretty distinctive design. However, I can't say I understand the logic of their locations. Looking on ZapMap, I can see that major cities like Alnwick, Bulldog and Gretna Green are well covered, while tiny villages like Liverpool, Manchester and Birmingham are totally out of luck. It really feels like the executive just wheeled out a dartboard and set up shop wherever they hit. Well, if the CEO, Michael Hajesh, happens to be watching this video, feel free to reach out. I might have a few suggestions for new locations. Ionity charge a flat rate of 74 pence per kilowatt hour everywhere, but also offer a membership, their passport, which for £10.99 a month reduces that price to 56 pence per kilowatt hour. Well, as always, be mindful that most cars won't reach anywhere near the 350 kilowatt charging rate listed. You'll need to refer to your manufacturer to understand. Next up, love them or hate them, uh, it's actually hate them, is BP Pulse. As one of the legacy oil companies, they're certainly not what most people would think of when it comes to electric vehicles. And at 85 pence per kilowatt hour for 150 kilowatt charging, 79 pence for 50 kilowatt, you'd be forgiven for thinking they don't really give a fig. But that's because BP's strategy is a bit more sinister. The prices drop to a much more reasonable 63 pence for the 50 to 150 kilowatt charging when you pay their £7.45 per month subscription service. Well, this makes it very hard to provide a fair comparison to other flat fee services, as your mileage and how frequently you charge at these particular charges will massively impact the value proposition. But they must be keen to get you sign up, as they're offering the first month free and then £45 in credit over the next five months. 
There's other factors to consider as well, like many of the charging locations being single chargers located on petrol forecourts or in rather obscure places. That makes them more prone to queuing and more problematic if there are any reliability issues. I want to at least recognise that a polluting oil company is trying to offer Green a solution, but it just feels a bit like a poison chalice. Well, we really need to cleanse the palate, so what better time to discuss the biggest player in the market, Tesla. Many will have seen our recent video on the rollout of the V4 superchargers in the UK. Well, it's early days for this, with only two locations, one in Tottenham and the other in Cornwall. Currently, well, it's pretty good as there are only nine in Europe and two of those are in the UK. But expect to see new sites and many existing sites feature these upgraded units over the coming months and years. So please, again, if you manage to snap any photos or videos, send them across so they can be featured on the channel. Well, Tesla prices vary by location and time of day. So to provide a representative figure, I've looked at a dozen sites across the UK, in Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland and England to give us a point of reference. It works out at 39 pence off peak and 43 pence peak. So Tesla really does stand completely apart from the rest of the market. And with Tesla chargers able to be used now by non-Tesla drivers at certain locations at somewhat marked up prices, or reduced prices by paying a monthly membership fee, there is still appeal for the wider market. If you are able to charge off-peak, then the prices for Tesla are market-leading and make it an attractive proposition for those who live in properties that don't allow home charging or need it for road trips. Osprey is a network that has pretty significant coverage across Great Britain, though it is a bit sparse north of Preston. In terms of pricing, it's really simple. It's 79p per kilowatt hour right across the board. Their network coverage map gives you helpful information about availability and where restrictions apply and opening hours. Well, while some locations support up to 300 kilowatt charging, the vast majority of its chargers only support 50 kilowatt and have a couple of charging bays. That means your charging sessions won't be quick and if a few drivers happen to turn up before you, you could be in for a bit of a wait. Osprey's own figures show that you can expect to wait over an hour at their 50 kilowatt chargers to charge from 10% to 80% state of charge. In summary, its prices don't wow, its chargers don't wow, but you'll see quite a few of them. Well, Instavolt is easily recognisable brand in the EV space and has a decent selection of locations across Great Britain. But like so many networks, the locations on offer can be hit or miss. For instance, while there are four charging locations in Cornwall, this does not include Truro, Cornwall's only city, nor tourist locations like Penzance, St Ives or Newquay. And its Falmouth location has just a single charger, meaning you're chancing your luck if you ever do decide to charge there. Devon doesn't fare much better, with nothing for Exeter or the whole of Tor Bay. Well, we appreciate that they can't do everything at once, but if a tiny town like Amesbury, population 8,907, can have three locations, then maybe the more than 135,000 people in Tor Bay could be thrown a bone. Prices are a flat 75 pence per kilowatt hour, with the company pointing out that the government charges VAT at 20% rather than the home electricity energy rate of 5% meaning its price would actually be 9p cheaper. I'm all for them taking on that battle, but their prices are still a bit on the high side. Well, moving on, there always has to be one that is more difficult than the others, and that honour goes once again to Apple Green EV. Not only is it the most deceptively named, oh, being primarily a petrol fork or business, so as far from green as they come, but is owned by Blackstone, an American private equity company that has attracted criticism for the use of child labour. It's therefore fitting that its website would be equally awful, listing its price only as a low-cost price per kilowatt hour, with multiple payment options available. How utterly useless! At least Welcome Break, where many of its charges are based, discloses the price, a reasonable 49 pence per kilowatt hour, with a pre-authorisation amount of £25. 
Unfortunately, that pre-authorization fee can take up to 14 days to be returned as listed on their website. So if that's the case, and if you use Apple Green regularly, then that could start to add up. Were you to charge each day and each fee take the maximum length of time, that would be £350 in pre-authorization charges. Ouch! Oh, and you know that 49 pence per kilowatt hour I mentioned earlier? Oh, it's only after digging really deep that you find out, well, oh, hang on, that's for their fast chargers. It's 67p for their ultra-rapid chargers with an £8 overstay fee after 45 minutes. Honestly, it seems like Apple Green EV is going out of its way to be difficult. MFG, which is clearly trying to hide from its heritage, what with its standing for Motor Fuel Group, is up next. It charges 79 pence per kilowatt hour with a discounted rate of 69 pence between midnight and 7am. That really isn't much of a discount when everyone knows that the cost to provide electricity during these times is extremely low. The web website is extremely poor, not giving you any idea what speed, connectors or availability there is. When the other networks have done so well, this just isn't acceptable. That, and my experience, is that their locations tend to be situated on petrol forecourts, meaning they're smelly and unpleasant to be around. The flash colours aren't enough to win me over. Electric vehicles aren't like ICE vehicles, EV drivers are much more discerning, and we can certainly do better than the meagre offerings here. And last, and probably least, is Fastned. With just 14 locations listed in the UK, this isn't one most people will use all that often. And strangely, there is a rather stark north-south divide here. Down south, the majority of locations have 300 kilowatt chargers, while up north, it's mainly 50 kilowatt. Glasgow being an exception. And if you live north of Luton and south of Middlesbrough, then, well, just forget it. There's nothing for you here. That includes the whole of Wales. The southwest is also out of luck here. Well, that said, looking over in the Netherlands, which is where the company's based, it's clear to see that this is a serious player. Hopefully it will take the UK seriously, as the distinctive canopies at their locations really are quite a treat. Well, pricing is 69 pence per kilowatt hour, which is competitive with Gridsurf. And with the monthly £9.99 membership, you can get 30% off. Like many of the EV charging networks, Fastnet is keen to tie you down to their network. It's really quite interesting how different EV charging is compared to traditional petrol and diesel refuelling, where you just turn up and pay whatever the price listed is. As it stands, it's not really an issue, but if any of these companies start to dominate, then it's likely we'll see any value proposition quickly evaporate. Well, in conclusion, it's clear that the EV charging landscape is a bit of a mixed bag. There are some insultingly high prices and poor quality chargers and some extremely cheap offers. Some charging networks have remarkably broad coverage, while others are rare to come across. A number of things really stand out this month. Well, first, it's interesting that petrol and diesel are always dearer at motorway services, often by a ludicrous 20 pence per litre, which cannot possibly be justified. Yet EV charging does not follow that pattern. None of the EV chargers at motorway service stations, like Gridserve, Instavolt and Tesla, show any price difference at all. The second point of interest is one of levelling up. Tesla remains so incredibly cheap, while the oil giants are holding out or even increasing their prices. But in the middle, prices are dropping. At one time, Zapmap found the average UK price was 76 pence per kilowatt hour. Yet there are now more charger, net charger networks in the 60 to 69 pence range than ever, and many in the 40 to 60 pence range with membership. Now, if we can lose those oil giants, then prices will come down quite dramatically. And finally, don't forget your special offers. I met a BMW driver this week at an Ionity charger, and he revealed that his deal with the manufacturer dropped the 74 pence down to 26 pence for the first year. Well, thanks for watching. If you have enjoyed or found this video useful, please subscribe. And if you would like to support us financially, consider becoming a member with Patreon. 
Details are below. We want to thank you for watching along as Dave takes it on. And if you like what we do, what we ask of you is to click that like and subscribe to follow along.